You're listening to Bullpen Science with Dr. Richard Applin, the podcast that gives you real health solutions to your real health problems. And now, your visionary host, Dr. Richard Applin. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Applin, Teresa, and Glenda, and this is Bullpen Science. Uh, And this week, I wanted to discuss something actually I heard this morning, and it was talking about the satisfaction the public satisfaction of not only the healthcare system, but also their doctors. And it was a very interesting conversation. Uh, it comes to find, come to find out that most people are real satisfied with their doctors, uh, but they're terribly dissatisfied with the system. And so as I continued to listen, one of the things I was hearing is that if you're so dissatisfied with the system, trying to re- just overhaul the system by doing the same thing over again really is not changing the system. And I think maybe one of the reasons why there's so much dissatisfaction with the healthcare system is because the system is not designed to do what is being done. What I'm getting at is this. Healthcare is not really healthcare in this country. It's actually sick care. And the population wants health care but they don't understand what that actually means. Uh, maybe there's not a language. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, but one of the things that we're trying to do in Envision Chiropractic is educate the public, change the way they think, and that's the reason why our uh, Declaration of Intent says that we want to change the generational cycle of sickness, which is actually the way we think. Uh, Health care is a product. It is a product of a system. And so to evaluate the system, you really have to develop a science that's designed specifically for that. Uh, But we don't have that in this country. So what we do is we take pathological medicine, pathological science, and we try to look for some disease entity, thinking that the disease is what's causing the problem. Now, in systems engineering, one of the things you have to look at is everything affects everything. And so when you're looking at the human body where there is a lack of health, you have to understand how that system is malfunctioning, get in front of that, change the way the system works, and then, of course, healthcare starts to develop. So what do you think about that, Glenda? Well, really, I'm interested to know exactly what is it that they were satisfied with as far as the health system is concerned. I mean, dissatisfied, excuse me, what is it? Well, here's a great example. They were interviewing this gentleman. He had hurt his back probably 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, he was lifting something and he hurt his back. He laid off work for a few days. The pain went down. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, of course, he thought everything was fine. And then only to find out, as he continued to try to work, he kept re-injuring his back. Now, it's real obvious that what happened there is something malfunctioned. Right. And so the dissatisfaction came into the fact that he was going to multiple doctors who were doing the exact same test, taking the x-rays, doing MRIs, giving him pain medications, telling him he needed to exercise. But no one really looked at the malfunction. They were just looking at the result of the malfunction. I understand. I just, in my mind, I, I don't see how, do, how are you satisfied with the doctor and not satisfied with the system because the doctor is the one <laughs> telling me the same thing over and over again. I mean, maybe it's because they're on a personal level because they get to look in the doctor's face and eyes and feel like they're doing you right. know, what they, they, they need to do what's best for them. And, you know, honestly, the, the doctors are doing their job. Right. Uh, what the prob- trying to do. Yeah, but the problem that you keep running into is that the job that they're trying to do will not work right. because there is a malfunction in the system, all right, but there is no pathology. Now, if you wait long enough because the system's malfunctioning, then it will produce a pathology, and therefore pathological science or medical science has something to go after. So that's really what's going on. So Miss Teresa, she just came back from a vacation. She took a day, uh, an extra day off and went down to the beach. I did, and actually I spent the weekend with uh, a bunch of my girlfriends. And it's funny because we did get to discussing health uh, I've got some friends. I've got a friend who's a heart patient. She has an artificial heart valve. I've got a friend who um, has all kinds of issues. Um, actually, from her own doing, pretty much, she had a liposuction done mm-hmm. without researching it. Mm-hmm. Damage was done inside. Wow. Ended up having to go back to have a tummy tuck, and when they opened her up, found dead flesh oh, because yeah. of the damage done from the liposuction. So she's going through all kinds of things. Um, And we got to talking about 
just, you know, lots of discussions about our health, uh, medicines, all kinds of things. Uh, and I was sharing with them, you know, your approach uh, here and just talking about the two sides of our nervous system and how, how you know, God has created us to, to react to uh, stressors from one side of our nervous system and recover from the other side. And they looked at me. Like I had just given them this huge revelation. They did not know, you know, Isn't that amazing? there are things that they don't, that we are not taught. Mm-hmm. We are not educated to know these things. And it seems like for the most part in the medical community, it's the same thing. They don't talk to you. You doctors don't talk to you about things like that either. Right. You know, they're not trained or they just don't get it. I don't know. Well, you know, I have a lot of friends that are medical doctors, and, and I can see the frustration in their eyes when they talk about this. They're not trained to understand systems engineering. They're not trained to understand how the body functions. They're trained to try to stop a malfunction. And so if they have this disease process that's, you know, associated with this malfunction, then they create or they correct the disease process, but the malfunction never stops. Right. And it just produces an additional disease process. And so people, that's the reason why people wind up on so much different medication. You know, I was having a discussion with a gentleman in the orchestra at church and his father had hurt his back, you know, a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, you need to have him to go to a chiropractor. He said, well, does he need to go to you? And I said, well, that would be great, but that's not my intention. My intention is to get the, get your dad the right kind of help. Well, he's already been to the medical doctor. And I said, and he was given the standard medicine, which is a painkiller, an anti-inflammatory, and a muscle relaxer. And he said, yeah. And I said, and he was also told to exercise once the pain went away. And he said, yeah. And I said, how'd that work? <laughs> and of course, he says, he's still hurting, so he's going to go to another doctor. And guess what? They're going to repeat the same process. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I said, understand something. He messed up how something works. And until you correct what you messed up, no amount of pills is going to stop this. No amount of rest and no amount of exercise. You have to correct the malfunction. And that's the key for today. You have to correct the malfunction. So I've got a big question for you. Yes. If you are, please help me understand, if you are in a state, um, if you've had something traumatic happen to you and you have, you are in a state of, you know, bruising and soreness and you've got lots of inflammation going on. Is it best to wait till the inflammation goes on to try and take care of the inflammation before getting adjusted? Well, in my years of doing this, the answer would be no. Mm -hmm. And the main reason why is because the active inflammatory process can can be changed Mm -hmm. if you get adjusted. And so the idea of, well, we'll just wait until the inflammation goes away. Well, I'm telling you, the inflammatory process, even though it may only last three to five days, as soon as the inflammation starts going down, you start becoming more active, and then now you just flared it right back up. And so what we need to do is we need to give you a stronger drug, and then it winds up damaging something else. So the answer to the question is get adjusted as soon as you possibly can. Now, it would be better if you were being adjusted on a regular basis so that you did not have these issues because the people that get adjusted on a regular basis are more capable of not only the demands that are put on them, but they have better recovery skills, and that's really key. That's what, that was one thing I was um, talking to my friends about because uh, a lot of these ladies are on lots of medications and lots of inflammation. You know, lots mm-hmm. of uh, the symptoms they're having are due to inflammation. So I was, you know, trying. right. And you know, it's interesting. You, you know, you have all these issues that are due to the inflammation, but no one wants to ask why do you have the inflammation. Right. And you know, that's a topic that we're going to be discussing. Uh, I'm going to be doing a program at church for a month, and it's going to be on how to get in front of stress. You know, and I had a conversation uh, the other day, and they said, "Well, it seems to me like you're becoming the unofficial stress doctor." And I went, well, you know what? That has a nice little ring to it. But honestly, even the United States Government Health Agency says that over 90% of everything that goes to a doctor is due to stress. And so maybe being called the unofficial stress doctor is the right title for what we do. Well, I have really enjoyed this conversation. This has been a great one. And so all you guys out there, thank you for tuning in to Bullpen Science. And we look forward to the next podcast. You've been listening to Bullpen Science with Dr. Richard Applin. 
To learn more about real health solutions to your real health problems, call us at 256-203-9433 or visit us online at envisionchiropractic.com today. 